Okay, so in three, two, one. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Digital Culture Speaker Series. Today with us, we have a very familiar face, Chris Ziegler. He's a director, digital artist and architect of numerous international interdisciplinary projects in dance, theater and new media arts. Currently, he holds a position as assistant professor for interactive media at Arizona State University, where he is developing immersive environments for theater. Since the mid nineties, he researches the impact and use of digital media onto the performing arts on stage. With choreographer Bill Forsyth of, of Frankfurt Ballet, he developed a digital assistant for rehearsal and was a member of many dance research projects. In 2018, he was a member of the European Theater Lab, developing tools for site-specific theater performances. Since he first received the Young Art and New Media Award of the City of Munich uh, 2002, his productions have been performed and shown internationally. So Chris, tell us, please tell us more and take it away. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for the big introduction. Um, I would like to share my screen first um, to start with. And uh, this is the agenda I'm trying to uh, go through today. So um, I would like to show first some projects also, which I did in uh, 2020 last year, uh, just where COVID started. But also I would like to show some, uh, some examples from other theaters uh, coping with the COVID crisis. So after eight years of um, teaching at AME, I'm really happy to share with you guys um, my transitional phase of going back to theater projects. Um, one could say that actually I could not have chosen a, a <laughs> the timing was really bad, I have to admit that. So uh, when I came back in, in February, March to Germany, just COVID uh, one, the first uh, uh, phase started. And I was actually at the center of art and media and had to close down my, uh, my production Odo, which is uh, the first one of the three. So, um, I had to, way, to find ways to survive. So I reprogrammed or restructured the whole project uh, in a pan pandemic version. And um, I also would like to share maybe some other um, uh, projects I saw from theaters and symposiums, which uh, found a way out of the crisis, but maybe just go back to the agenda again. It was a little too short for you to recognize it. So the the three projects i'm talking about is nobody lives here which actually started 2018 and 19 already at ame with the support of many students and also faculty i will talk about it later uh, populus is a project i did with um, with a friend of mine uh, the director uh, christoph zauner of based in vienna uh, at the uh, performing arts school in graz uh, which is a very unique school, which has a specific uh, professional theater to present student work. So it's a really interesting place. And uh, finally, my dear project, Les Rois Marge, which is a multimedia music theater, which we tried to perform in public, but we actually had the premiere in front of cameras then finally in December 2020. So I'm trying to also show some videos, uh, but basically, uh, uh, slides I have prepared for you. But before I start um, with slides, I would like to show this website of the, the State Theater in Augsburg, which is a small theater um, near Munich, where the theater tried to, um, in the times of COVID, try to survive and try to reach the audience with buying 500 VR glasses, basically, to send productions home to people. Um, so theater is actually a, a place also for me when I grew up and doing a project there where it's really much about a certain uh, social event of physical presence of people together in one space. And this intensity of exchange is something you can replace uh, with virtual and digital formats with Zoom or um, with other formats. I'm talking about another conference later about which used Mozilla Hubs to replace this physical encounter. But first, I would like to go a little into detail what Art Theater Augsburg did, which is a really interesting experiment. So they said, we send theater home to people. Uh, we don't have people now coming to us, so we go to them. And what they did, actually, they, they made productions like this 14 Curtains. It's an interesting production of Einar Schleif, um, where uh, 
it's actually a 360 video production. It's not a VR augmented reality production. It's actually a 360 movie. Um, but they choose the topics very carefully that they reflect the, the topics of the day, of the time of COVID. And here in 14 Curtains von Einer Schleif, it's a, it's a presentation of a piece about an abandoned theater where the, an old um, actor having performed in that theater trying to find himself or his memories and has a conversation with the house, with the theater, with the stage and with the architecture. And I think to find the right topics to, to reflect our society and also the, the, the disruption of COVID actually to use technology is something I found interesting in, in, in Germany also saw by, um, by one event, which I was a little uh, uh, audience member. I had, I had the opportunity to join the, the Mozilla Hub event with Twitch, which is another VR channel. A chatbot uh, like a chat channel uh, but basically this um, uh, a symposium of, of theater makers this is a Deutsche Dramaturgische Gesellschaft means it's a dramaturgy society where actually people writing about theater uh, making theater and also dramaturgs which are uh, usually the kind of consultants of theater productions um, working with the director um, having the communication with the audience and translating actually the content of a director, which is mostly invited into a theater to the audience, to the local audience. And, and this uh, meeting this year, the last year uh, called Dig It All, <laughs> kind of a word pun, uh, digital and Dig It All uh, for uh, theater people, which were not used to use digital media, was a collaboration between the Deutsche Dramaturgische Gesellschaft and the, the a special new place, which is the Academy of Theatre and Digitality, uh, which also I happen to make a presentation in the opening. Um, that is a place in Dortmund, a, a city which is right in the center in the, in the old coal mining industrial hub of Germany. And it's called Academy for Theatre and Digitality. And they have residencies where actually people can apply to, uh, just to let you know. And um, can have 15 months of production time of experimenting and, and, and research. And what the, the collaboration of this uh, society of, of dramaturgs and uh, the theater society created though was a really interesting encounter of, of people meeting and making 3D avatars before they came to the conference as theater people and visiting scenographies and pieces which the students presented at this Mozilla Hub event. Just to let you show how it looks, I would like to share this video. Ich bin Wessel, ich bin Künstlerin und Szenografin. Ich mache jetzt eine kurze Einführung in die Inhalte der Arbeit. Jedem neuen Verbreitungsmedium der Kommunikation, wenn es sich gesellschaftsweit durchsetzt, entstehen neue Möglichkeiten der gesellschaftlichen Vernetzung. Die Dinge, die wir entwickeln, die sollen frei verfügbar sein und die können dann im besten Fall auch von anderen Theatern genutzt werden, soweit wir das Open Source auf Verfügung stellen können. in Power Rai Du, Filling the Vacuum. Es ist eine Arbeit, die aus mehreren Episoden besteht und innerhalb dieser Episoden die Geschichte einer künstlichen Intelligenz erzählt, die sich im Körper einer Drohne befindet. In meinem Forschungsprojekt Holocai Cube verbinde ich diese drei Säulen, also Theater, Virtual Reality und Hologrammpyramide und untersuche damit, wie digitales, interaktives und dreidimensionales Theater überhaupt funktionieren kann. In Daten und datenverarbeitenden Systemen steckt eine Agenda, aber es stehen auch immer Menschen dahinter, die mehr oder weniger bewusst oder unbewusst agieren. So, I hope that you could see the sound and everything. Uh, yep, I see it should be possible. Um, so, this is also, you saw at the end, um, the inside of the academy setup. Um, Actually, that was an experiment, I would say, it kind of succeeded, it was really spectacular, but I don't think that this is really a way out of replacing theater for uh, as, as a whole. Um, 
I would like to start my own presentation now, um, arguing about this. Um, if we have the Mozilla Hub, for example, you are quite, uh, let me see, sorry, here you go. Uh, it's quite a constraint, actually, what you could do aesthetically. So the avatar you're doing is actually kind of a, a 3D figure. Okay, it's not you. And uh, the space is actually some predefined uh, architecture. You can visualize it, but um, it's actually not an encounter as such. So I, I would say that reconstructing a boring foyer of a real place is not really uh, replacing the quality of, an, of a virtual encounter. Uh, to give its own quality to it. Um, the actual conferences themselves looked like a pimped up uh, Zoom conference in a way. I found it interesting because you can change perspective and also go approach someone, but basically it's nothing else like a, like a Zoom meeting in 3D. And so why doing this in this way? So I found another uh, interesting project from Sebastian Hanak, a scenographer I'm working on is a two um, augmented reality projects now in maybe next year. And he is starting in Kassel in a, in a city in north of Frankfurt, an interesting project using Mozilla Hub to pre-visualize and pre-test uh, complicated setups of the theater stage. So you can see the construction of the theater stage he's putting there as a permanent kind of a, a, a space concept. So he has another idea of scenography using virtual media now to have an ongoing transformative space as a stage and uses Mozilla Hub to, to test video projections and interactivity and also audience perspective. Here is a ramp, a scaffolding where the audience is, sits on the stage and is really near almost uh, like in an in a arena uh, on the, uh, at, at the action. And also there's a close interaction between both areas of stage and, and and audience. So this is important to use maybe virtual media also to test these cases. So basically, um, I would like to come now to my own production, which was um, starting actually with the help of many students. I will show them later and faculty at uh, AME at Synthesis also. Uh, I would like to show and maybe give a little text or we can see the text here. Let me see. This is the text of what I want to read. So you can read it also. What it is, what it is actually what I did. So interactive theater for five people and one IR AI character. And we had to modify it to reduce the amount of people seeing that piece to a pandemic, pandemic compatible version. Um, the content is Odo is a journey through worlds of imagination inspired by Antoine de Saint Exupéry, a little prince. Many people know that uh, children's stories, something also I was reading as a kid. Uh, <laughs> but also with Stanley Kubrick's HAL 9000 is the, the AI um, computer of 2001 Odyssey, a space Odyssey. Uh, an AI character lives on stage in Plato's cave. So the actual plot starts with a really simple fact that we have an offline chatbot which can't leave the space physically. He has no body. Um, and this is actually how a good theater piece always should start with a dilemma. So this dilemma was actually the mere fact of digital entities not being physical. And, and I try also with this dilemma, we could articulate a, um, a theme for COVID in a way. By the way, there is a link here. I can um, copy this maybe uh, very quick into the chat into the chat system that you can see the links it's not necessary um let me see that everybody gets this oops uh, okay so i just copy the message oh it's not working here okay no don't worry i think so then just see the links here in the text document i think that was working um i will talk about the, the piece. Um, here is actually, we are using the body of this, of this character, uh, a former installation I did uh, called uh, Forest 3. And um, with the help of students also building up that system was Chris Slatek, Slaket, uh, here see in the front. And he was, um, uh, I could uh, also invite him over to Germany to help me to install it in Karlsruhe, the Center of Art and Media. 
And Odo is the, the actual virtual body of the space. And this is Brandon Meshley, a, a student uh, a master uh, and a postdoc, which is helping me working on the communication base, the, the, the app talking to the chatbot. And here um, we have from left to right, we have Vishal Pandey and um, uh, Ravi Burkham and Kartik Kulkari, which worked on the chatbot system and the crowd index and the face tracking module. So what we try to create is actually um, um, an environment. And here this, um, just to finish that summary of, of people contributing to the work, uh, Connor Rawls helped me working on the system driving the, the virtual body of LED lights, motorized LED lights of, of a chatbot. And these are the communication devices where the audience um, are working with. Basically, um, the whole idea is that the audience is interacting with the virtual body of lights and um, a voice, which is actually talking to them and, and, and also asking them, uh, inviting them to a virtual journey through different um, planets of understanding human behavior and this is the interface where uh, Odo is talking and also giving information to the audience. And this is the production place in, in, um, in Karlsruhe. I just go through really quickly, I think, uh, through the scenes. So this is the body of um, the piece, uh, the communication device. And here we start with the audience giving, um, presenting their names and also uh, Odo is asking about the names of each of the members of the five members of the audience and and then uh, it, it presents itself with games so it tries to learn the audience the names and the behavior and communication games uh, and asking them about their homes what the how they live at home and also about concepts of vacation. So where do you go when you have one week of vacation? So this idea of vacation is something a chatbot has problems to cope with. And, and then he talks about himself, uh, the situation being kept in a cave and trying to escape his space. And the audience is helping Odo at the end to escape and to go in to enjoy uh, the outside of his cave. And basically at the end, uh, they co-create a new landscape, which is then when he's staying back home, uh, when audience leaves at the space in the stage and, um, and uh, Odo can remember the event. I would like to, to show uh, the video, just a short video maybe, just to uh, start with here. is your favorite color? You said red. Nice color for the roof. You see, I am learning. A man fell to the earth. 
His plane crashed in the middle of the desert. I am thirsty. You are my pilot now. What shall we do? Search for water or fix the plane. Push water to the center of the stage. More water. Great job. Solar System X-3, Planet 15 underscore 2, Rev. Mr. and Mrs. 13. Let's say, I gave you one week of vacation after the pandemic. Where would you go? In another world, people live in a cave. The world outside the cave are shadows and reflections to them. One day, one person escapes from the cave. He climbs out. Help the caveman to climb up on that plane. Raise your arms. Let us build a landscape together, a new planet of your ever-beating heart. Move inside. Move your arms. Build hills and valleys. Let us build a landscape together. I will now take care of it. So this is the end of the piece. Um, and I had to restrict the audience to five people, but actually at the end I was quite happy with a really condensed uh, uh, installative uh, uh, version which I showed in Munich. But the next piece, um, just to go uh, to the next topic, is uh, then a Populus, which was um, a music theater production of um, the, the Performing Arts School in Graz, uh, which uh, I can also read the, the text of this uh, piece that you understand uh, what it is about. It's a music drama um, by Peter Jakoba, the, the, the composer, a production of University of Music Performing Arts in Graz, in cooperation with the ORF, is a radio station in um, uh, Austria. The audience finds itself in the middle of a dystopian circus, Forum Populus, a dynamic hybrid of circus ring and open forum with diverse islands on which there is talking, singing and action. Populism is about the power of language in our society. And it's also about populism. What we try to do is actually this, this danger of, of destroying society by populism and by, by, by disrupting language because social media also has an influence how we communicate. And it's really about these days how people talk to each other and how they meet. And Actually, the, you see this space was actually planned that we are having the audience all over the space. So the islands were planned that the audience sits in between all these islands and places and moves around. And that was a huge problem that we could not do that in COVID. So here we had the audience at each angle and the side. And we articulated the idea of keep distance also uh, with gestures uh, of the performers here, always there. There's always this uh, keep distance. And we just uh, try to articulate the danger of society right now, also coming from COVID. But actually, it is about the power of words and demagogy. And, and here we also used uh, media very much, an overlay of media. So I tried um, to visualize and using augmented reality in this scenography from the scenographer who gave me uh, just this, this 
impossible graphics and say, how can we, could we do something like a floating object on stage, which is actually the, in, in embodying the physical power of destroying society. Here see the, actually where the audience seating is, is planned to be in between the, the islands. And we had different versions of architecture hovering or maybe an impossible uh, inverse object. But at the end, we managed um, to, um, to make an overlay for the audience that they can see through their mobile phone and a meteor hovering above the stage, above the actors. In another stage, in another piece, in the middle of the piece, we had virtual musicians because the musicians you see now, they are separated and are, they are kind of dystopian by themselves. And here we have a classical a quartet and ensemble which dreams about the past of um, of, of playing music together. And here is a, is a phase of the, the, um, the research we did um, with uh, making actually a scenography with augmented reality without markers and also without GPS. And that's actually the problem of, of augmented reality that you need a reference base. So this is the way how augmented reality works with the marker. You have a, an object which gives the, 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 the position of your mobile phone related to a 3D object in space and can place another virtual object on that reality. And, and there's something like, um, like uh, depth, depth tracking and also you can have the floor identity uh, where you can place objects on a ground plane. And then you can shift this ground plane or the objects on the ground plane. But what do you do? Uh, if you have like not have like Pokemon a GPS space where you can place figures in space or maybe in the street. So what we do it here, um, just to say, uh, to show um, with uh, Nico Fultz, a programmer from Karlsruhe, which uh, I worked with since 10 years. And he gave me an idea that actually uh, augmented reality is nothing else like having one place. This is the left lower place with the plane and to the object and trying to find the vector where this object is in space. So you need actually the, the, the compass information, the distance and height, and that's all we needed. So what we did at the end was, um, was a map um, uh, which had a certain uh, identifier for each seat of the audience. And um, I can demonstrate just shortly. Uh, no, we had actually a kind of a code system for each of the of the of the audience member to run the video, uh, maybe I can show a little uh, glimpse of the video, uh, how it looked in practice. So we go back to research, and have uh, Populus, and can see um, a little glimpse into how it looked like at the end. So the audience had to uh, input a code which we gave them on a piece of paper on their seats and they could um, at the end they could see after a certain countdown they could see the video. Unfortunately on this version um, the camera didn't work so you can see the meteor unfortunately with no live uh, image uh, put through but I, I swear and I that actually on most um, phones it did work actually like this and here's the the scene with the uh, with the musicians on the stage. Okay, so I think um, I have to get a little faster now to my last project, which is um, the project, um, uh, which is my dearest project of last year, Le Roi Marche, where we worked with uh, uh, the, my favorite uh, music theater production in Vienna is actually the Neue Oper Wien, the new opera Vienna. I can just uh, shortly just read the, the, the the summary synopsis of the piece. So Le Roma is a multimedia music theater, uh, the kings are from the east. So you say in English, I think, um, three wise men. In German, we would say drei heilige, drei, uh, three holy men. And in, uh, in France, it's called Le Roi Mage, uh, about the, the three kings um, uh, searching um, the new messias in, in Bethlehem. Um, it's a it's a part, it's a multimedia music theater by Fabian Panizello after a story by Michael Tournier. In addition to the personal stories of Gaspar, Paltasar, and Melchior, the, this story is the encounter with King Herod and the story of Tower, the fourth wise man who came too late for the birth of Christ. So it's a really funny and interesting uh, romantic story, very complicated to, to play because it's actually made for 
concert for a concert or situation where the singer is reading the text it's really complicated music and and also as you see here we have an, an amazing venue where we had we could stage the, the piece it's called reactor in vienna it's it's, it's like a church um, but it um it was actually a former dance place where people come together to have fun and, and dancing and now it's really an, an amazing uh, venue for theater and also um, filmic events. So they renovated it and made a really nice uh, fancy place out of it for theater. And we've staged our system, which was uh, the same system like Odo. Actually, you see the lights again. And here's Christoph Zauner, the director I frequently work in Vienna together with. And we built up uh, the same system like Odo here in another way. So here it was about the the stars and the constellations leading three kings to bethlehem so the system of, of moving lights was actually perfectly also adapted for that purpose here is walter kobera the, the the director of the of the neue opera the new uh, new uh, vienna opera and the team working on the piece but actually with face mask and we already knew in that time mid of december that we are not able to perform in front of people is really sad. So we had a fantastic uh, rehearsal period, very intense, and uh, finally also with projection. And finally, I can just show at the end of this presentation, hopefully, yeah, I think we have a little time still, um, the Ramage, the video, which is kind of a making off to give you a glimpse of what we did. Make it a little faster. Let's see. Okay. Hallo, wir spielen Le Roi Marge, eine Multimedia-Oper, die eigentlich semi-konzertant bis konzertant gedacht ist. Wir machen eine voll inszenierte Version davon, äh, was ein Himmelfahrtskommando ein bisschen ist, weil es sehr schwierig ist, aber äh, sehr intensiv, äh, 65 Minuten durchgehende, volle Power von einer Person, eine Mono-Oper. Ähm, wir haben noch eine Tänze dazu und eine Lichtinstallation, die auch als Protagonist mitspielt. Was wir, was wir versucht haben in diesem Stück ist, das Licht so einzusetzen, dass es aktiv teilnimmt an der Darstellung. Das haben wir geschafft, indem wir eine, eine motorgestützte Lichtbühne gebaut haben, die auch äh, nicht nur Licht macht, sondern sich auch bewegen kann zur die Bewegung des Tänzers und auch zur Sängerin. Wir haben uns auch vorgestellt, dass, dass die Sternenbilder, die die LED-Lichter, die Lichtbühne machen können, dann auch Geschichten erzählen. Möchte ich ein Komet sein? Ich glaube. Wie er so den nächtlichen Himmel voller funkelnde Sterne betrachtete, schien es Gaspar, als tanzten alle Sternbilder im Rhythmus des Kometen aus goldenem Haar.
Balthasar war von diesem Schmetterling entzückt. Es sind bläuliche Kalligorf-Schmetterlinge. Als er schon nicht mehr wusste, was er mit all den zusammengetragenen Kunstwerken tun sollte, schloss er das erste und größte Museum der antiken Welt zu bauen. Okay, so with this, I would like to, to end my presentation. Um, Thanks so much, Robert. Chris. So this yeah. is just to, to show you what actually nobody could see yet. <laughs> um, it's really sad that the last production was never shown to people. So the first two, Popolus and, and my own production was able to be kind of restricted to audience, but let's hope that actually in some months time maybe in end of 2001 we can also see theater again so that might be cope and that my timing going back to theater production is actually not uh was not a, a, a choice i have to regret so <laughs> we are all hoping for that i can uh, uh, people ask questions please? lauren is asking a question oh, okay. i believe in chat yeah. she's asking what aspects will you keep going forward that you've learned in covid in your practice Hmm. In COVID, I learned actually really to to um, to take actually. I was always against um, I, I, to say it in another way. My artistic approach was to integrate digital media on stage. What I saw now is to take theater terms also into virtual space, and that's something I never took in for myself as an interest for me. Um, that encounters on virtual environments and maybe augmented reality as such outside theater stages are any interesting. So now through COVID, there is a reframing of what theater and what, what social gatherings are. And I think that's interesting to think about. There is a certain disruption going through society, which is not good, which I think that people have, I think it's important that people can hug and kiss. And <laughs> so it's, it's really small, small gestures between people. For example, that French people uh, kiss, uh, kiss and, or Dutch people. It's, it's a way how to encounter and to talk in a different way than keep distance. Uh, 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 but actually to, to mix that with, with virtual reality is actually a new form of encounter, which I found interesting to explore, really. It's not something I say it's replacing anything, but it's just enriching our perception or maybe our possibilities to meet each other. So Zoom conferences are really interesting in terms of um, 
that I have now with big groups of meeting, regular meetings, which never would have been possible before. So I would like to keep that. But to replace a theater event, which is a social, physical event, I'm really sad. And I don't want to see that happening any longer. But thanks for the uh, for the hint. Actually, you're right that also COVID made new ways of encounter and, and new art forms possible too. So Robert, you're working also on many augmented reality environments and, 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 and topics. So this is uh, actually really, I would say also for students, really exciting times. Any other? Yeah, questions? does anybody have any other questions for Chris? So only we have the, the um, restricted uh, Zoom chatbot. Is there anything possible on YouTube you can read out or something? Um, well, I can read that Garth has said, uh, Garth oh. Payne has said, looks good, Chris. And Stugnitz <laughs> has said, thank you for sharing, Chris. Thank you. So. Thank you very much, guys. And so I'm here till end of May. And if you want to meet me, I'm also here in person now in Tempe, preparing two augmented reality projects, which I have in my pipeline with Sebastian Hanak, the the uh, cinegrapher you have seen before with the Mozilla Hub environment. And I hope also to do maybe sharing ideas of future collaborations. Uh, and I'm really open for that. Even when I go back to Germany, I would like to keep in contact with you guys. So well, it's very fascinating stuff. Uh, does anybody have any other questions? All right, Chris, let's definitely keep in touch. So yeah, okay. see you so, all. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for your talk and we'll Thank see you. everyone else.